Cal is the uh, founder and a national spokesman for the Cornwall Alliance for the Stewardship of Creation. Cal, welcome back to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Thanks, Brian. Good to be with you. Well, Cal, I brought you on for a specific reason. I've been wanting to talk about this thing. I've, I've had it, the stories in the stack for a week or two now or longer, and I've wanted <laughs> to talk about it, and I never can seem to get it. So I said, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I get to this story today by bringing Cal Beisner on it. Get him scheduled. He'll come on. He'll talk about it. We will get uh, to this uh, story. Now, the, what, I want, what I want you to walk us through, Cal, this is unconscionably, this, this sounds like Nazi Germany. It sounds like, it, it sounds like what went on in some of the, the, the medical hospitals in, in World War II in Germany. Almost hard to believe that this could happen on American soil, but it did. Walk us through this EPA experiment. Well, the, the experiment has been done at the University of North Carolina in uh, Raleigh, Raleigh-Durham, and uh, it's, it's designed to try to yield for the EPA information about the health effects of what is called PM 2.5. That's very, very fine particulate matter. It's, uh, it runs from about one-seventh to about one-eighteenth the diameter of the average human hair. <laughs> that's, that's pretty tiny stuff. And EPA wants to regulate that, and so they're looking for evidence that it causes significant health damage to human beings. And part of how they're doing that is they're, they're conducting laboratory experiments. What they do is they pay people uh, $12 an hour to come into the laboratory and... Uh, have a tube taped around their mouth uh, so that they can't bring air in in any other way, and they breathe air that is pumped into the laboratory from a diesel truck, uh, from the exhaust pipe of a diesel truck just outside the wall. And they'll, they'll be there breathing that stuff for up to two hours at a time. One particular uh, subject was an 18-year-old uh, UNC student, uh, Huffman, who was paid altogether about $3,000, which would imply about 250 hours of breathing that stuff during a one-year period. Now, according to EPA's uh, claims, its documents in support of why it needs to regulate this stuff, there is no safe level expo of exposure to this stuff. It is extremely toxic. It is, it is fatal. Uh, it often causes uh, uh, fatality right uh, during the very time of exposure. You don't have to have a long time of exposure and, and uh, build up over many, many years. Uh, and yet, EPA has been subjecting people to these experiments. Here's the really crucial issue. Because of the experiments that were done that you mentioned uh, a minute ago in Nazi Germany by medical doctors on human subjects, that subjected those people to, uh, to very high risk of fatality, uh, a code was developed. It's called the Nuremberg Code. And that code requires, first of all, that no human beings in any kind of experimental testing can be exposed to uh, threats of death. Uh, they, can, they may be exposed to some threats to their health, but not to the life itself. Sec second, they must always be, uh, be uh, given informed consent, and that must be proven in writing. The informed consent must mention every sort of risk to which they're exposed. But in these experiments, the EPA has not warned the, the people who participate that they are at risk of death from these experiments. So there's a, a, a real conundrum here. Either EPA is grossly exaggerating the risks of PM 2.5, and by the way, that would include all kinds of dust. You know, <laughs> uh, when you're out in the in the countryside and you drive down a dirt road, you're stirring up dust. There's lots of PM 2.5 in that. Mm -hmm. Every farmer ex experiences PM 2.5 pretty much all day, every day. Uh, this is routine in large urban areas. But EPA is either grossly exaggerating the risks from PM 2.5, or it has broken the law by not properly informing the subjects in its, in its experiments at UNC 
of the risks that they face. Well, you know, and, and to me, Cal, I look at this, talking here with Cal Beiser of the, of the Cornwall Alliance for the Stewardship of uh, Creation, and my understanding, Cal, I don't have the story right in front of me. I guess it's in the stack that's back in my office. <laughs> but but they were, you know, they, they have a certain level of exposure to this this particulate matter that they think is, is, is safe and above that. It's, it's you know, lethal. Uh, and yet they were exposing these uh, uh, these individuals to levels that were far in excess, if I understand it correctly, far in excess of what they themselves said was would be considered a safe dose. Uh, yes, not just in excess of what they consider a safe dose. And by the way, in some of their documents, they actually do say that there is no safe level huh, of wow. PM 2.5 exposure at all, period. Now, that, that, by the way, is simply untrue. But it's part of what they say in their documents, as, as they do on a variety of other environmental issues, exaggerating risk in order to justify draconian restrictions on pollution emissions. Well, Cal, uh, do, you, do you have in front of you, do you have, I, I've got it here, but I, I'd love to hear it from, from you, the, the direct quote from Lisa Jackson, who is the EPA administrator, and she's talking to the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee of the House yep. Energy and Commerce Committee. September 22, 2011. Yeah. And tell, us, tell said, us what she said. She said, quote, particulate matter causes premature death. It doesn't make you sick. It's directly causal to dying sooner than you should. Uh, that's the quote. And uh, the, the real problem here is that EPA saying that there is no safe level of exposure, put these human beings in these trials, these tests, and uh, failed to exercise proper informed consent. Uh, they, they have record of the, the uh, risk statement that they did give to these people, and it nowhere warns them that these tests could be lethal. Hmm. It does warn them that they could lead to uh, to allergy problems, to colds, to, you know, to some breathing difficulty and things like that, uh, even to some heart arrhythmia, uh, but it never suggests that it could be lethal. Now, Cal, I, we're coming to an end here. got about a minute left, but it seems to me there's only one of two conclusions you can draw about Lisa Jackson. Either she's completely hyped and exaggerated the threat of this particulate matter, just hyped it out of completely all, uh, out of bounds of all reality, in which case we, we shouldn't trust anything we hear from the EPA, or if she does believe what she is saying, that it's lethal, it causes premature death, then she ought to be in prison. So either she's telling the truth and ought to be in prison, or she's not telling the truth and we shouldn't pay any attention to anything that comes out of her mouth ever again. Well, you, you seem to have hit the uh, conundrum pretty, pretty squarely there, Brian. But the fact is that EPA has exaggerated many different risks as a way of trying to justify stringent new pollution controls it wants to enforce. Uh, and those controls are extremely costly, and they're actually harmful, not just to the economy, but to human health because of that. Um, but uh, Jackson uh, has made a habit of doing that kind of exaggerating, and right now it's about to come back and bite her. You know, Brian, people can read about this in Cornwall Alliance's latest newsletter. If they go to cornwallalliance.org and click on Newsletter Archives, they can find yesterday's newsletter and read the story itself. And it's worth doing. I mean, that's why I brought Cal on today, because I read the newsletter yesterday and said, i got to bring Cal on to talk about this. Cal Beisner, uh, spokesman for the Cornwall Alliance for the Stewardship of Creation. Cal, as always, very informative. Thank you for taking time with us. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, Brian. God bless you. Focal Point AFR Talk, number to call if you want to join the program, 888-589-8840.